All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I will never forget, Robin, this goes back a long time ago, that we had a visit from a gentleman, and he came into the uh, studios, and uh, he was holding a folder, mm -hmm. and he, he said to us, um, I was wondering if there's any way you can help me out. And it's kind of like, okay, everybody has something they want to help with, and, and, and I, I feel a little bit guilty now going back and looking at myself at that time but it kind of we get this a lot you know yeah we do but anyway i always listen to what people have to say and i, I listen to what he had to say and he said he had a son in school and he wasn't in uh in the public schools he was in a school here in ocala called new horizon academy for autistic children and he was very very upset that they were going to close their doors because the the money from the the public schools that follows the kids to school does not follow them when they go to a special school. Yes, uh, and true. And so money was a big issue. And he said, is there anything you can do to help? And I said, well, uh, gosh, you, you've touched me. And I thought he was going to cry. And He I, did cry. He did cry. Casey did cry. Okay. And, and I thought... You know, we can put it on the radio, but it's really, it's, it's so hard to guarantee that anything's going to help, you know, but let, let's just give this a shot. Let's, let's give it a shot. Let's put it on the air, see what happens. Well, you know, there is a God in my, my mind. Yes. And, and, and sometimes things work and sometimes things don't work, but that time it worked. And we had, and, and it was a snowball, th it was the snowball effect that really caused it to work because to say it was simply the interview that made a difference would be a lie. What happened was the interview got people interested, got a lo the local newspaper to do a story, got mm -hmm. the local TV station to do a story, yeah. and next thing you know, people were talking about the fact that there was a wonderful school for autistic children. And as a result of that experience and the relationship, we went over to the school, we got to meet some of the parents, and then we invited some of the parents on. Yes. And, and that's where I wanted to take this, because Inevitably, the parents were saying to us that they believed that they knew what caused the autism. Mm -hmm. We then went on to have doctors who were almost adamantly, uh, sometimes borderline upset, or I don't want to say angry, but we've had a few oh, strong rebuttals to that. Like when I would say to them, we've had some parents who believe that their children have autism because of, of a vaccination problem mm -hmm. they were almost no that's already been proven wrong and they would very sternly tell me that i'm i'm making a mistake by spreading that information around yeah and i'm i'm taking the position well wait a minute this is what the parents seem to think mm -hmm. and so so if they think that then i have a responsibility to ask it and of course then i'm chastised for being a stupid radio guy and how do i know anything and i and I, yeah. I i will always say no i don't know anything i'm just asking a question mm -hmm. but he really had a hard time with that question um we have a guest on the phone john e micah he has a child diagnosed with autism spectrum uh i guess the diagnosis was in the year 2000 and he's written a book called the autistic holocaust the reason our children keep getting sick so Without telling you what he said, I'm going to ask him to tell you himself. Uh, the book is dedicated to his son, John. Uh, he writes in the book, he, meaning John, is the catalyst by which all this came to be. A wonderful young man, descriptive beyond words or title. I love you, son, and I love that. John Sr. is on the phone. John Micah, good morning, John. How are you doing? Great. How are you this morning, Larry? It's an honor and pleasure to be here with you and Robin. It's our honor. Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from lovely, uh, lovely upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region. I love that area. Well, thank you for being on the air with us. How's John Jr. right now? How's he doing? Not so much a junior anymore. He told me he had Asperger's when in 2000, as you mentioned. Uh, and that uh, used to fall on the uh, autism spectrum disorder. Uh, and now at this time, he's 28 years of age. Uh, his uh, ASD autism spectrum disorder actually wasn't confirmed until July of last year. He was 28 years of age. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he slipped through the cracks for quite some time. Uh, my story is unique in many regards. Um, went through a painful divorce, uh, and it was one parent blaming the other par parent for being a bad, uh, a bad parent, so to speak. And my son never really got the uh, medical attention or special educational services he needed. Uh, and then when he was in uh, high school, he was taken out of school for behavioral and uh, uh, 
you had communicative uh, regression and socialization problems. And uh, he even tried to kill himself. Uh, at, at one point, he was institutionalized. And uh, he didn't want to leave the house for like five years. So we went through a very uh, awkward uh, separation. And uh, it was through writing this book, I was actually reunited with my son uh, after a, a very long absence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started doing some research on this book. Um, and it just uh, dominoed after that. And I got into finding more and more. And you mentioned how parents believe that uh, autism is created as a result of a vaccine injury, and there's countless numbers of people that would share uh, in that theory, uh, especially those parents who have children who... Oh, I know. Well, well we, I'll never forget one time, I, I, one of our guests, who was a parent, said that she, I think it was, uh, I think it was the father, actually, right? I think mm -hmm. he, he has since passed away. I think it was the grandfather. Yeah, but I think, I think I think I he, think he was addressing a group of people, and he said, "How many in this room believe that their children have autism because of a vaccination?" And every one of them raised their hand. Yeah. So wow. I mean, that says that if people believe it, at least I mean, it's hard to. It's hard as a radio guy who doesn't really. St I don't study these things. I just talk to people. But it's hard for me to try to bring that question seriously to a doctor who then comes back at me with almost a chastising tone simply for asking the question. It, doesn't, it, it didn't seem to do anybody any good to even ask the question if I was going to be, uh, I don't know, spoken to condescendingly like that. Well, keep one thing in mind. Um, you know, you have some things here at play, and, you know, when we talk about science to support things, we have science to support the fact that uh, children are injured through vaccinations. We have a vaccine court, in fact, that has awarded uh, you know millions of dollars to uh, uh, litigants and, uh, and parents and children who suffer from autism, uh, whereas their vaccinations or their shots or the MMR uh, resulted in, let's say, uh, uh, ADEM, that's acute disseminated cephalomyelitis, uh, which resulted in, uh, in Bailey Banks's case uh, with a... Uh, uh, pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, which falls on the autism spectrum disorder. Look at science, okay, all together, and, and what they're telling you is that all these things say that uh, either the vaccinations or it, it used to be the mercury can't cause autism, uh, and you, what you're trying to do is prove something that's not logically provable, because, you know, that's called a, a nil hypothesis. These things don't hurt you. And, you know, that's not possible because then you'd have to show me every single way and every single situation and possibility where that, that it, it doesn't work that way. And, and you can't do that. You can disprove it. I mean, if you have one case where you show an example where uh, a vaccination does result in the harm of a child or, or a child regressing into autism, then you can sort of disprove all those scientific theories. And everything pretty much scientifically is based on anecdotal evidence. Those parents think to speak them. And uh, and this is and and the research is totally ongoing by the uh, CDC, CDC and the scientists for the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, you bring up uh, thimerosal, and that the CDC knew about this. That's right. Thimerosal is actually okay. uh, the correct. Process. Well, that's okay. You say potato, I say potato. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, that's mercury, that's 49.6% uh, uh, by weight. Mercury, which is a known neurotoxin. And uh, there's been, yeah, all kinds of scientific studies to prove that. And, you know, hey, let's look at another study that they came out with uh, last year in uh, 2014 when the, uh, the CDC uh, exonerated the MMR vaccine, not having any association with autism. And then we have senior scientist Dr. William Thompson, who admitted that the CDC altered that data. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and and uh, and you know this is that's crazy. This is, uh, John, yeah, he said the original the original data showed that the MMR vaccine was given before 36 months of age. It was associated with a 240 uh, percent increase wow. in Africa. John, we need to take a break. So just just hang in there. We'll be right back. All right. The book is called The Autistic right. Holocaust. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Intervals of clouds and sun with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm around, especially during the afternoon and evening hours. Watch for localized flooding. The high today, 84 to 88. Mostly cloudy later tonight, those 72 to 76. For tomorrow, variable cloudiness with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm or two, especially during the afternoon and evening hours. Tomorrow's high, 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. 
If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy, never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mail Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. We are saving thousands with Robert Palmer. Uh, so yeah, so rule number one is always shop around. Always shop around. If you're trying to get a mortgage, if you're trying to get the best credit card, if you're looking at student loans, cell phone bills, you name it, rule number one is always shop around. Always shop around. That's rule number one, just one more vital part of fighting back to stop being a financial zombie. Yes, you can take the mystery out of the complicated world of finances, take charge when it comes to your money. Listen in on The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 AM, Saturdays at 12.05. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Who doesn't love heading out on the boat with a family, hitting the ATV trails with friends, or blazing new stretches of highway with riding buddies? Your toys are your ticket to outdoor fun. At the McDonald Allstate Agency, we get to know you and help make sure you have all the right coverages. Plus, when you bundle your coverage for your car and your home with your boat, motorcycle, RV, or more, you can save up to 30%. So call the McDonald Allstate Agency today at 622-2333 or stop by one of our two Ocala locations at Cal Hills or the Jasmine Square Plaza. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. 18 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. John Micah is on the phone. He's the author of a book called The Autistic Holocaust, The Reason Our Children Keep Getting Sick. And he has a son also named John. John Johnny, I think he said, 28 years old. Born born about a month after my son was born. So I yes. can relate to the uh, the time in the in his life. Uh, and he, he says in the book, this is not a happy ending kind of a book, although the happy ending is the fact that he got back together with John Johnny. And, mm-hmm. and it says your dad, too. We, did the autism cause you to separate from your dad for some reason? Uh, well, no, that's a whole other story altogether. But, you see, I, ha- I also have a, my own disorder. Um, I have a severe neurological disorder. I have a severe bipolar disorder. Some people can relate to that. I didn't know uh, for a fact that uh, um, if I was bipolar that my son would have a greater risk of becoming autistic. Uh, there's a lot of things I didn't know before I wrote that. And so... Uh, like I say, and, and that was not the primary reason uh, we had a estranged relationship. There were other complications in there. It, w- it would take the whole half hour to okay. talk about. Is, is it fair to say that autism may be caused by more than one thing? And is it, is it fair to say that, um, that some people are accurate, that it was the, the vaccinations that caused the problem? Well, I think you're right on uh, on two accounts. You're right on the fact that there's there's a multi there's multi uh, facets to this disease. It's not nobody really knows exactly what the cause of it is. Um, you know, we can look at genetics. Um, we can also look at the fact that there's some theories that you know we're just diagnosing it better. The the theory or the definition has been broadened. That's not true. That you know that's not true at all. Uh, you know, there's uh, some environmental concerns here, and and we can look at one thing that we've done more so than we have in the past when we had one in 10,000 kids that were autistic or maybe one in 250. What do we do? We increase the, uh, the advisory committee on immunization practices. Uh, they stepped right up on their, uh, their shots that we're giving our children. I think we're inundating our children with way too many uh, chemicals and toxins and poisons. And uh, I think that's having an adverse effect. And I think the uh, ingredients that go into these vaccines really need to take be taken a look at. I think our delivery system of what we put into our children needs to be different. And so you, there's all kinds. 
And, and, and you talk about flu shots. Now, do you think an adult has to be in danger of uh, developing autism when they get their flu shot? Well, some adults actually get GBS. It's a Guillain-Barre syndrome. Uh, just interestingly, there was a, a representative in, in California uh, that uh, legislated and signed a bill that was Senator uh, Pan, Richard Pan, introduced and passed and signed the forced vaccine bill that uh, does away with exemptions for children. In other words, you can't get an education, uh, what he's saying, in, in California unless you get vaccinated. And uh, he actually had uh, somebody working for him uh, for seven years, uh, John Ber- uh, Bercelli, uh, he was a seven-year volunteer for Senator Paul Pan, and he got a, a GBS after a, a Tdap vaccine. That's a, a, a diphtheria um, uh, pertussis, acellular pertussis, and uh, tetanus. So uh, he he got that uh, he got that uh, terrible, painful neurological disorder, as uh, some oh. people do. It. So, yeah, some adults are in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I remember, and you, you do mention it in the book, that the uh, it, it may not be the vaccines directly. It may be the, the proximity in time. In other words, you get so many of them close to one another, and that might be the problem, which would also mean there's a solution. Just spread them out a little bit more. Is that is that right? Well, Carolyn Maloney uh, in the Oversight Committee on Government Reform made a good point. She posed that question to uh, Colleen Boyle, who is the uh, Director of uh, Science and Health and the uh, uh, Developmental uh, and Birth Effects. And she said, why do we give these kids so many shots uh, all at once? Can't you? Why cram nine, ten down their throat at once? And Colleen said, well, the reason we do that is an advisory committee on immunization practices that determines these things. And the reason we give the kids all these shots at one time is just to make sure they get them. Uh, and because some parents don't bring their kids in when they're supposed to get their shots. So we use a cookie cutter approach. And, uh, you know, we just jam these things down the kids' throats. And I think you're right. I think you get mm. a good point there. Other mm. countries do that. And, and we, we have, as a result of what we do to our children. Oh, so uh, th- let's use that as a, as a question. So if, if the statistics are worse in, in, in their favor, in other words, if, if the other countries are doing better, like statistically, according to the book, one in 88 children has autism. One in 88. Well, Is that accurate? Uh, on the back of the book, it's one in 68 children. Uh, it was one in 88 when they did the 2012 hearing. And uh, uh, Isa, who was the chair then, he, he said, if it goes to higher than one in 88, we, we do, in fact, have an epidemic on our hands. And it did, and, and the CDC refuses to acknowledge it. You know, we have a lot of government uh, malfeasance, uh, injustice through our legal system and legislative laws that get passed. So what, are the, uh, what country would have better numbers, and what are those numbers? Do you know? Well, we're like right up on the top of the top rung of the, the scale here. Um, and, and if you go to Utah and you go to New Jersey, it's one in 26. Uh, oh. And, you know, but we have one of the most aggressive uh, schedules that there is in the entire world. So, and so like, so so, but I, I guess what I'm asking is, in in, a, in another country, England or France or something like that, do they have different ways of of giving the vaccines, and are there are their numbers different? Or is it more like one in ten thousand compared to our one in eighty? No, no, everybody's a little higher uh, than one in ten thousand. It used to be that way years and years ago, uh, and then of course I believe environmental changes. Uh, things we're putting in our children made things worse and you know i think you got to look too i think i I mentioned in the book you know the chapters i I mentioned even with genetically modified organisms uh having uh complications on children with uh, autism uh and there's been like i say uh, there's all kinds of complications now i don't have the prevalence and incident rates for every country in front of me right now uh in africa it's very high Uh, in india it's very high where they have uh, aggressive scheduling too, and all the countries where they have aggressive scheduling, it's it's a it's a similar rate towards ours, and, and where they don't have the similar uh, scheduling uh, enforcements mandated, it's not as high as ours. But are, either way, it's going all over the world. Are uh, boys and girls affected equally, or does it hit one gender more than the other? No, it's a five to one ratio with boys, and that's uh, was discovered by some scientists that were ostracized and lost their licenses. And anybody that's you know uh, goes against this whole thing of uh, injury from uh, vaccinations gets ostracized, basically. And, and these two scientists, they actually uh, made a link between testosterone in boys uh, and, and uh, higher levels of, uh, lower levels of glutathione, which is uh, a chelation agent, which gets rid of heavy toxins and metals. Uh, and, and so uh, they came up with a therapy to reduce that uh, uh, 
in, in t- testosterone and children. But that's the main reason boys uh, boys get it more than girls is, is testosterone. It's a five to one ratio. Wow. Are, are you familiar with the story about Robert Kennedy Jr. comparing um, the autism epidemic to the Holocaust? Well, uh, I didn't read the story. I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of things I didn't read, and he, you know, there's probably some things I should know. But well, this is this is what he said. Let me let me tell you what he said. He said th- this is his quote, Robert Kennedy Jr. He said they get the shot that night. They have a fever of 103. They go to sleep, and three months later, their brain is gone. This is a Holocaust. What this is doing to our country? That's the whole quote. And then a few days later, because he had so much. Press, press, uh, not press, pressure uh, from the press. He apo- he ended up apologizing to people who were outraged because he used the word Holocaust. Gosh! But to me, you have to use a strong word like that to try to make an impression upon people about sure. the about the epidemic and perhaps a way to stop it. And and which is why I think you're you should be using that word. Well, I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, that's what my editor thought. And, uh, you know, if, if you go through the book, it's a quick read. It's only 164 pages. It's something everybody should read. If you're having a child, if you're going through the uh, uh, scheduling, uh, we need informed consent. We need to educate ourselves. And we can with these laws that are hurting our children. Have you, uh, have you had uh, any feedback from the doctors? I haven't been ostracized by any doctors yet. But uh, you know, I, I get uh, I get naysayers from from here and there, and but the but the response from the book has been very good. I, I don't make stuff up. I support everything I say. My editor said just state facts, but the people decide from themselves. Put two sides of the issue in there, and I put uh, PubMed studies in the book uh, that support what I say. And I could have made the book a lot longer. It was, it was just something to get your whistle uh, wet and just to get you started in the right direction. All right. I have a copy of the book. It is called The Autistic Holocaust, The Reason Our Children Keep Getting Sick. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to us. I'll be glad to leave it for you here at the radio station. The rest of us have to go buy it. Um, tell me, Give me some information on how we can buy the book. Well, you can go through Trying Day. You can go through Kindle. You can go through Amazon. If you want a personal autographed copy of the book, um, all you got to do is uh, send me an email request. That's uh, just J-O-N uh, dot E as in Edward dot uh, Micah uh, that's my last name, M I C A, at I as an in Indian, S and in Sam, P as in Peter, dot com. John dot E dot Micah at ISP dot com. Okay. We'll send you a autograph copy. Okay, excellent. Uh, John, thank you for what you're doing. I think this is an important message, and I'm sure that you're going to get a lot of feedback and flack probably from the medical community. Um, but, but if, hey, you're on the same page as Robert F. Kennedy Jr., you know, if there's something that needs to be said about this condition and, and eyes need to be opened, then it's going to take somebody like yourself to, to get us to pay attention to it. So that's why this is so important. Uh, thank you for doing what you're doing and for being on the show with us today. Oh, you're welcome. And again, thank you so much for having me, and God bless you. All right. We will take a little break. We'll be right back. This is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our pasture mowing service, we also offer fence row spraying. Now is the perfect time to get ahead on weed control for an overall aesthetic appearance. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. Fox News Radio, I'm Joe Chiuro. President Obama meeting with Ethiopia's Prime Minister this morning. President Obama's visit represents a new height in our bilateral relations. The two leaders discussing a range of topics, including terrorism. President Obama also taking time to mention the debate on the Iran nuclear deal. Try to get a good argument on the other side that's based in fact as opposed to rhetoric. 
And I haven't gotten one yet. The president has faced criticism from human rights groups and others for visiting Ethiopia. Their boat found capsized off the South Florida coast. A search underway for two teens who never returned from a fishing trip. The teens took a family fishing vessel out from Jupiter Inlet Friday. Text messages to friends said they were headed to the Bahamas, but the boat was found near Daytona. Fox Radio's Evan Brown. There's a $100,000 reward in the search. Fox News. We report. You decide. Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom-vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. Be back in about an hour. Aren't you getting the car serviced? Uh Uh-huh. You have an appointment? No, they take me right away. It's Premier Express. Express? Wow. Imagine. Express dentist visits. Express work days. Express food Introducing Premier Express Express from Mercedes-Benz. Vehicle maintenance in about an hour or less with no appointment necessary. Express dinners at your parents' house. Hey, easy now. Visit mbusa.com slash Premier Express for a participating dealer near you. Premier Express. It's about... And it's about time. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall Screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound at DIY only $4.99. Plus DIY has the largest selection of mobile home parts and accessories anywhere. From carpet to doors, get the DIY supplies you need for less. The DIY Home Center Outlet. We are your building material closeout store. 2191 Northwest 10th Street, just two miles east of I-75. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. All right, 27 minutes before 12 o'clock. Wow, the morning has gone fast, hasn't it? This, yeah. this morning, there was a 100% chance that it was going to rain. Then the meteorologists changed their mind. And uh, let's see if I can say what it, what it now is. I think it was down to 80% chance. Yes, yeah, 80% chance now. So still, oh, okay. more than likely, another rainy day in Monday. So you might as well go to yeah. Jerry's Point and Gun. You, you've been thinking about going over there and browsing for a while. Exactly. You know, th- which is the thing. When we talk to Ruben about Jerry's Point and Gun, you know, we always talk about specific things. Mm-hmm. There's always something I think of after we've been talking. Something yeah. that I saw over there or something that I bought over there that I, you, it never comes up because there's so many different things. And Ruben's on the phone right now. Good morning, Ruben. How you doing? Good morning, guys. How you doing today? Good. Do you know what I got over there one time? I got this beautiful set of silverware. It was really gold colored silverware. It was. It was beautiful. It's really nice. And see, and I don't know if you carry that kind of stuff all the time, but I happened to find it as I was browsing. I ended up giving it to my son and his wife as a gift, and it was just a wonderful gift. And it came in a nice box. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> that is awesome. That is definitely a nice gift, especially a wedding gift at summertime. We have some of that stuff here at Jerry's Pond and Gun. I'll tell you what we also have. You know, we don't talk about this a lot, but here at Jerry's Pond and Gun, we also have a full line of white metal detectors. And the cool thing about that is it's summertime. You can go to the beach like um, I have one myself, and I go out there, and, and the one that I have is a waterproof one, and we have the model here in the store. And you can find little bobby pins or nickels or dimes or, you know, little uh, like if someone loses jewelry and stuff like that, and you never know. You can also take the chance of finding a $20 gold piece, $10 gold piece, and having a real, you know, great time and make some money. So uh, come on down to Jerry's Point of Gun. Check out our white metal detectors. They're awesome. Didn't Brianna lose a, a ring or a necklace or something or a yeah. bracelet? Remember that? Yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, yes. In the in the water, like Lake Weir or something. Yes, definitely. And the white metal detector came through, recovered it. Everybody, happy, happy, happy. Oh That's wow! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that was a happy moment. Wow. Exactly. So, do you do that? I mean, do you do the metal detecting a lot? 
Oh, yes, it's something I like to do. Um, my dad and I do it together, and i got a couple friends. We go to different places, and it's really neat. You know, you can find all kinds of stuff. Old, uh, like if you find an old homestead or something in the woods, an old axe heads or just railroad spikes. Just it, It's a neat thing to do. That is something cool. Like, uh, you're, yeah, it's, it's really fun. You ought to try it. Check it out. Come down and see me. I'll set you up with one as well. <laughs> well, you know, th- have you ever seen the book D- Donnell and Boomtown of the 1890s? Have you ever seen that book? Yeah. Yes, okay. Okay. In that in that book, they talk about a city called Parkersville or Parkertown or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and I one time went to where the book says it used to be, where that little town used to be. And right now, there's nothing there but woods. And right. I've I've often thought, I wonder if there's anything like in the dirt that we, you know, so the metal detector would help you find stuff. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, I guarantee you, there's there's things there. And the, the good thing about Florida is Florida being the history that we have. There is stuff everywhere in Florida with the beaches, the springs, the different the, the woods with all the history around. It's something awesome to do. Metal detecting is, is just something. It's, it's really cool. You'd enjoy it a lot. So how deep, how deep do you go in the water? I mean, is it just like... I mean, you don't go 20 feet underwater, do you, with this? <laughs> no, no, it'll go the length of the rod, which is three and a half, four feet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, that's, sure. that is awesome. Yes, and I tell you what else we have at Jerry's Pawn and Gun. What do you have? You guys know what's coming next. We have Guns. everything. Reed and I are back here in the gun department, full line, Brown and Dealer. We've got customers on the floor browsing. Everybody's having a good time. Uh, guys in the back, master jeweler doing his thing, making custom pieces, fixing jewelry, taking care of your jewelry needs. The girls are up front taking care of everything. We've got deals, tools, guns, jewelry, Blowing them out here at Jerry's Pawn and Gun. A full <laughs> line of Costa stuff. It, it's happening today. Come by and see. Get the sunglasses, yeah. Uh, and, and real quickly, do you have any heads on your wall? I know Jerry has heads on his wall. Do you have any yeah. heads? Yes. Yes, I do. You do? So I do. if I go to your house, like if I go to Jerry's Pawn and Gun, can somebody point, like, can I point to a head and say, what's the story behind that one? Does everybody know the stories? Yes. And if we don't, we'll make one up. <laughs> 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 well, that's a good thing. I just, just think it's I, I just think it's absolutely amazing because Jerry also you also have pieces there at Jerry's Pawn and Gun that are uh, uh, museum quality pieces that aren't for sale, but people will be able to hear a little bit of the history of the area. Oh, most definitely, we've got a lot of um, stuff you know from the old uh, theme parks that used to be here. We have some our Homa collectibles, a lot of history pieces, some old corn grinders. Uh, water pipes they used to use to, to get water and carry it around when they didn't have pumps and, and wells and things like we have nowadays. A lot of historic pieces here at Jerry's Pawn and Gun. Come by and check them out. We're also looking for stuff like that. Anything of value, you know, history pieces, guns, knives. We have a full Randall collection, coins, diamonds, your silver, anything you might need help on or you want to sell. Come by Jerry's Pawn and Gun, guys. Let us check it out. We're being serious. We're taking care of everybody. Come everybody. Out. I want to get a corn grinder. I can make my own nachos. Yeah, you can. Yeah. I, I can set you right up. Come by. It's a low <laughs> mileage. It's like a 14 owner, but it's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ruben, always fun to chat with you. What, what yeah. is the, uh, the phone number, the address, and the website? The phone number is 352-622-3780. And the address is 404 Northwest 8th Street here in Ocala, Florida, of course. And our website is www.jerrysonline.com. All right, all right. Ruben, always good to chat with you. Tell everybody we said hi, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Yes, uh, we will, guys. Like I say, thank you so much. We couldn't do without you. Come down to Jerry's Pawn and Gun, 49 years, Ocala, North Central Florida's gun headquarters. We'll take care of you. We'll treat you right. Come see us. All right. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, guys. We'll be right back. Have fun with Joe. After this. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound. At DIY, only $4.99. Plus DIY.